Good evening, beloved community, and welcome to our final Wednesday evening Lenten pause of this Lenten season. Before we begin tonight, let's just take a breath together as we center ourselves in this space. Almighty God, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Amen. I'd like to share with you an excerpt from the Gospel of John, which comes from the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister, and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Judeans had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Judeans who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Judeans said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When Jesus had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Judeans therefore who had come with Mary 
and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Tonight, I'd like to share with you an excerpt from a book called This Here Flesh. It's written by Cole author Cole Arthur Riley, who is the creator of Black Liturgies. And in this book, This Here Flesh, which she also sort of the subtitle is Spirituality, Liberation, and the Stories That Make Us. She has a chapter on lament, and I'd like to share with you a few excerpts from this chapter. You can't tell me that it doesn't change everything, that the one who created all things that holds together all things cried. If Christ wept for Lazarus, he must have done so not out of an absence of hope or faith, but out of love. It was an honoring. When we weep for the conditions of this world, we become truth tellers in its defense. People who can say, this is not good. It is not well. I'm most disillusioned with the Christian faith when in the presence of a Christian who refuses to name the traumas of this world, I am suspicious of anyone who can observe colonization, genocide, and decay in the world and not be stirred to lament in some way. For all the goodness of God, my ancestors were still abducted from their homes, raped and enslaved. I will not be rushed out of my sorrow for it. And we can delight that God made the garden with all those trees of fruit to feast on. But the earth is ailing and eroding from overconsumption and neglect. I shouldn't need to recite a litany of wounds and injustices and decay in order to justify my sadness. In lament, our task is never to convince someone of the brokenness of this world. It is to convince them of the world's worth in the first place. True lament is not born from that trite statement that the world is bad, but rather from a deep conviction that it is worthy of goodness. I can only wonder why we have so many depictions of the cross with Christ looking stoic and resolved and so few with him crying out in pain and abandonment. When I read this story, he does not seem composed. He seems devastated. When we reconstruct a Christ whose very face remains unmoved, how are we to trust that he feels or longs for anything at all? A passionless savior cannot be trusted to save. I have never felt closer to God than when God has tears running down God's face. I don't delight in this, but by this, I know that I am seen. I think that when God bears witness to our lament, we discover that we are not calling out to a teacher, but inviting God as a nurturer, a mother who hears her child crying in the night. She wakes rises, and comes to the place where we lie. She rushes her holy warmth against our flesh and says, I'm here. I want to draw our attention to the story, the part of the story that says, when Jesus saw Mary weeping and the Judeans who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. I keep imagine Jesus showing up to a place where those who are in pain are consoling one another and comforting one another as they share together in their suffering and their shared lament and grief, and Jesus witnessing them crying, feeling deeply disturbed 
and Jesus sharing in their grief by weeping with them. As we received news on Monday of the 128th mass shooting in our country since the beginning of the year, as we are yet to only finish out the month of March, I imagined Jesus showing up to Nashville, Tennessee and witnessing the parents and the neighbors and the children and the siblings and the classmates and the teachers and the first responders as they all comforted and consoled one another. And I imagined Jesus weeping together with them, crying out together with them for the three children and the three adults who were shot and killed by gun violence. I can imagine Jesus was greatly disturbed and deeply troubled in spirit, weeping alongside this community, weeping alongside every child who will have a hard time sleeping this week, every child who will have anxiety about going to school, where their life might be taken, or every parent or grandparent who aches with pain about this destruction from this violence that keeps reaping throughout our country. As we continue to journey through Lent, as we continue to dwell in asking big questions to God, to one another, let us remember that our God enters into our suffering. Our God is a God who cries. Our God is strong enough to join us in our tears. Our God is courageous enough to join us in our rage, our lament, our pain, our shock. God comes to us sits with us, curls up next to us, joins with us however we might be responding, and weeps alongside us as if to say, I'm here. Amen. Let us pray. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and the chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work, or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, who is father and mother, Son and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>